Alrighty. Hello, Year 12. Welcome back. Um, got a lesson or videos for you this week, which is good. Uh, we'll be looking at Lesson 9 and 10 today. Most of this video will be about Lesson 10. Lesson 9 is very similar to uh, Lesson 8 and 6 in the way that you will be doing a reading and then conducting a summary table. Now, the readings are really good because there's so much information that we can put down for say gender roles or the background information on Saudi Arabia or parent authority and the nature of but in doing the reading you are getting some initial knowledge uh, like most people do when they read um, you are then converting that knowledge into a quick half a page or one page summary and then an even furthermore a table so that information is going to cement in your brains as a result if you can though highlighting don't forget the date and the lesson heading that it is uh, you are completing and we will go to lesson nine so we're about halfway through the Saudi content so far so basically from lesson seven onwards I would say is where most of our big juicy dot points will come from in this topic in the ones that you may likely get asked in the HSC that being said, they could ask you anything, but these are the ones where you probably get your seven, eight, nine short answer responses from. So we'll start quickly on lesson nine. So part of the syllabus, we have to follow, uh, we have to, sorry, we have to study continuity and change through a selected aspect. So I've chosen gender because I think it fits really well with a lot of the other dot points that we end up looking at. So if you'll see here, um, it's this dot point here. So we're not doing all of these dot points. So students will explore both continuity and change uh, through a detailed study of one of the following aspects. So we've got beliefs, values, lifestyles, education, family life and population changes, gender roles and the status of men and women, or the legal system and political processes. So. I've chosen this one. One, because there's a lot of change regarding Saudi in terms of gender roles and the status of men and women very recently, but it also links into a lot of the other dot points we've already looked at, um, which is if we're thinking um, of working as efficiently as possible, that's a great way um, to have content that's less for you to remember, but it's also more in-depth information you can write about in your HSC. So when we're talking about the nature of power and authority, a lot of the stuff we've already looked at in terms of how Saudi society views um, men and women, the idea, you know, that women have to have a male guardian and things like that um, really links well into this dot point. And then when we look at further dot points such as conflict theory, when we look at how that's affected change in Saudi, a lot of that's through gender, is change progress, all these other dot points we can look at. Um, there's a really strong focus on gender there, so it's a really good one to do. So that's why we're doing that. So what I'd like you to do is conduct the reading once you have done the reading, I don't want you for this one to create um, a summary page for it. I've written um, this reading from scratch, so it's my own words. Um, what I instead want you guys to do is when you do read through it, have two highlighters. Have one that will do and look at continuity and one that will look at change. So the idea is I want you to go through your reading I want you to highlight core bits of information that relate to gender roles and the status of men and women in Saudi Arabia. And I want you to code it between um, examples that represent continuity and then examples that represent change. Once you have highlighted those areas, that's when I want you to contribute to this table here and write down in dot point form um, a sort of summary, I guess, of the main points that you've highlighted. What will that now? I'm not expecting you to fill the two pages up. Um, similar to this table here, we have a lot blank because as the year progresses, um, we'll just be keeping an eye on Saudi Arabia as a country to see if there's any other recent changes or anything like that that we can add into our tables and it will be the same for um, our study on gender and continuity and change. Um, we'll then go through that and share our ideas uh, in class. So that's lesson nine. We'll move on to lesson 10 now. So lesson 10 is looking at the idea that is all change progress? So we're going to 
sort of tackle two dot points here today. The first question is, is all change progress? And which groups benefit from change and which do not? So I think to really answer that first one, we really need to understand that second one. So these two dot points kind of go concurrently. The first thing I want us to do is looking at this question here, and this is based off the lessons that you've done in terms of gender roles and the status of men and women, but also um, some of the information from these critical readings and that we've summarized here. I want you to consider the effect of, um, now if you haven't finished lesson nine, pause the video now and go and do that because a lot of the stuff I'm actually gonna talk about now is leading on from lesson nine. You see what I mean? So you won't, you may not understand some of it if you haven't done that. So pause the video now and go do that and then come back. All right, now that you're back, having done lesson nine, actually go back and do it. There are some of you here that are watching this that haven't actually done it. I know who you are. Do it now. All right, now that everyone's done that, um, looking at the effect of the new changes that Prince Salman has led, um, I want you to tell me just off the bat if you think these changes are progress, and then I want you to justify your answer as to why, okay? so. This will be a bit of a pre-testy knowledge bit for me to ascertain what I guess you define as progress versus um, what other people might define as progress. So it'd be interesting to see your answers there. So make sure you do justify them. So justifying meaning provide reasons for. Now I wanna talk about this bit first. I think a lot of these uh, dot points are looking at the word progress and I think it's really important we understand what we mean by the term progress before we actually um, get started. I might start zooming in from now on. It's probably going to be much easier as a lot of you look on your phones. Um, so a few thoughts on progress. So the first one is that if we're looking at a definition, obviously, it refers to, in society and culture terms, improving the quality of life for all people. Okay, so whether that's quality of life socially, economically, culturally, religiously, in whatever capacity, it's quality of life all round, okay? And we would define that as progress because you're getting better over time. So if you think about that arrow, I'm doing this, think about that arrow going up when you see those graphs or those charts, progress meaning that we're improving the quality of life for all people. So in some circumstances, um, change does mean progress. So when we're looking at the dot point, is all change necessarily progress? We know that some social theories, say for example, evolutionary theory, says yes, all change is progress. Um, however, there's, we can be critical of that. So in other circumstances, change isn't progress for all people. So an example here, or a brief example, is that progress for the environment um, in terms of uh, less pollution, um, less carbon emissions in the air, uh, greater diversity of wildlife, better um, habitats, all that sort of thing. Progress in that terms for the environment often would mean regress for some businesses and industries, and the true is vice versa. So progress for business a lot of the time means regress for the environment. Now, I want you to highlight this keyword here, regress. Regress is the opposite of progress. So if progress is going forward and going on an upward traje trajectory towards betterment, Regress is the opposite, you're going down. So you're walking backwards, okay? Um, so make a little annotation there of what regress um, means off to the side there. Um, because when we go down to our table, we're gonna be looking at it. And it's a really good word to use if you answer a HSC question on this uh, dot point. Um, you might've heard the term of regression. Um, that's where it comes from. Um, another thing I want to point out is that there are always advantages and disadvantages to every single change that happens. Now, you might um, potentially disagree with that if the change is really good, but there will always be disadvantages to someone or someone's even values or beliefs, um, and there's absolutely no escaping that. I'm not saying that, that there isn't change that is for the betterment of most people and the overall good. Um, I'm just saying that if we look at it, there's always an advantage and a disadvantage. There's always progress and there's always a regress, depending on your perspective, your beliefs, your culture, etc. And we'll see that in our table here. 
um, when we get down to it a little bit earlier. So just really understanding that. So if you do get asked a question in the HSC that's asking you to evaluate or assess, you will be able to talk to both sides of the argument and it's always recommended that you do so. So the term progress itself is subjective. So subjective, if we want to highlight and make an annotation, means that it's open to interpretation. If something is subjective, it is open to interpretation. So there's no necessarily one truth or absolute fact that everyone understands. It is subjective. People interpret it differently based on their own culture and things like that. Um, and how one defines progress has varied over time. So we can see this as an example in colonialism. So colonialism being when um, England went out and colonised slash invaded um, many parts of the world, Australia being one of them with the First Nations Aboriginal people. So colonialism was once considered progress by, by most of society. So the idea that um, the white man is going out to educate and enlighten the world um, and you know bring about the magnanimous culture of a Western civilized society to everywhere was once considered progress but now in a lot of academic circles is widely recognized as being extremely regressive so the idea that the view on progress can change over time what was once considered progress can now be considered a regression um, so we consider the Western world and most progressives another example here uh, we consider the Western world and um, and the Western world being, you know, the most progressive societies, we think of Australia, America, England, most of Europe, they're considered the most progressive countries or the most modernised, you could say as well, if you want to put another concept in. Yet developed countries, so those same countries, have the highest percentage of mental health issues worldwide, as well as physical health issues such as obesity, um, despite being the living embodiment of progress. So it really does depend on what you measure progress against. If we're measuring progress against, um, and this is my next point, if we're me measuring it against economic circumstances or the amount of money you own, the amount of possessions that you have, you would say that the Western world is the most progressive. But if you were looking at it from a health standpoint, um, again, you could argue that the Western societies are the most progressive because generally we have the longest life expectancy. But if you look at measuring it against quality of life a lot of the time like I said before we've got the highest rates of mental health um, issues we've got the highest rates of um, physical health issues um, um, high rates of, of uh, cancer and things like that as well so if you measure it against that we might not be considered the most progressive countries so certainly if you measure us against environmental um, pollution and, and damage to the environment progressive countries are by far the worst so it really does depend on what you're measuring progress against um, so therefore the lens that we view and understand the concept of progress is influenced and limited um, by our personal beliefs our values and the influence of our own culture on our own perception of the world so this is a really important point because if you get a question in the HSC and you're asked, you know, is all change in one country considered progress, your answers are going to be impacted by your personal experience, your beliefs and values and the influence of your own culture. So, so for example, um, a lot of the change on women that we saw in Lesson 9, we from a Western perspective would definitely regard that as progress you know women having more rights, they're increasing their autonomy, their power and authority in um, different levels of society both meso um, micro and macro is increasing but if you look at it from the lens of traditional Islamic Wahhabism they would see that as a regression it's not progress to them um, because according to their culture and beliefs um, women shouldn't um, have as many what we would call as many rights um, and that they shouldn't be able to leave the house without a male guardian and, and things like that so when we answer that question in the HSC, it's always, I guess, a good idea. And again, it just shows, I mean, it's not the end of the world if you don't, but I think it shows the, the real level of a band six thinker if you're able to say, um, from a Western perspective, recent changes in Saudi Arabia regarding women have, are seen as progress. So putting that caveat of from a Western lens or from a Western cultural viewpoint, it is seen as progress. I think that that really, I think one, it, make sure it's more solidified because you're saying that the caveat is based off the Western perspective 
Um, so if a marker doesn't agree with you, they can't fault you because you've said it's from a Western perspective, you know? So that's a few thoughts on progress there before we get started and looking at this table. So what I will do is I think we'll go through that as a class together. Um, but I really want you guys to, to read through this. And if you can think of anything else that I haven't listed here, I want you to add it to the table as well. There's a bit of a little bit of space after each one. And I would like you to add it. So what I've done is I've broken it up into three categories, changing rights for women. So I've, I've listed kind of the three big changes that are happening in Saudi. So changing rights for women is one of the first ones. We also have a culture change. And what I'm referring to there is the influence of Western Westernization on Saudi Arabia, as well as the influence um, or less of an influence that things like, um, re pardon me, religion um, is having potentially on Saudi Arabia. So there's definitely room to add additional dot points here because I do not believe I've talked about that as well. So when we're talking about traditional culture, like looking at things like the um, religious police and the, the power and influence that they have had, um, that's a big culture change. That's one I haven't touched on here. So that's definitely one that you should include and one I will look out for when I do your book checks. And then the last one is technological change. So that's a really, really big one as well that's happening um, in Saudi Arabia. Again, we're measuring it against what we think is progressive in terms of technological change and what is regressive. So all of these changes we are going to be viewing from a Western perspective or um, viewpoint. So yeah, so make sure you read through these. I want you to try out at least one for each because I definitely haven't looked at all of them. Um, and if you can, no, nah, that'll be two. I was gonna say, if there's any that you think link, like you could draw a little arrow. So say for example, I'm talking about westernization, um, which is changing the women dress code so they can choose to choose what they wear. They can choose to choose what they wear. Um, you might draw an arrow with that one as the other side of that coin is that cultural imperialism of the West is permeating. So you might want to draw little arrows across if they relate to each other. If they don't relate, that's okay. You don't have to do it. Um, this is a, a summary of when we look at this dot point, which groups benefit from change slash which do not. Obviously, the, the main two category of people are women and young people that benefit from most of the change in Saudi, but those who do not benefit as a whole, we're looking at Wahhabism Islam, um, particularly the religious police and their decline in power and authority. There's a word called dissidents, and dissidents mean people who oppose um, change, or if you can add a little arrow here, um, people that disagree with the status quo. So people that go against what the majority of people believe are dissidents. So you could say, um, anti-vaxxers are dissidents um, for health and safety in Australia because they're part of a minority that oppose um, change that the majority of people agree with. Um, and then the last group that don't are the conservatives or those that are closely affiliated with patriarchy or that extremist right wing of Islam that we see um, in Wahhabism. So they're the people that don't benefit. So what I want you to do, what's going to build on from here is you have all your ammo for that up here in the table and then you've got two questions I want you to attempt so the first one is justify why women benefit from recent social and cultural changes in Saudi Arabia and refer to examples um, there are no marks allocated to this but I still want you to use the specific verb here okay so justify meaning provide reasons for to support a certain argument so you're supporting the argument that women do benefit from these changes and you need to tell me why they benefit from them or how they benefit from them using examples here so i would probably frame this in appeal one peel here i might even add that in I might do the same here and our second question is why does the religious police and wahhabism are islam not benefit 
from recent social and cultural changes. So you need to tell me why they don't. Okay, so again, you're taking a position or an argument. You can't tell me how they do, even if you want to, because the question is asking you how they do not. And again, one peel um, talking about that for me. And I believe that will bring us to the end of our lesson this week. We've only got the two this week. Uh, one being because the reading's quite large and this table activity um, can take some time. And then here you've got, I guess, a lot to consider, um, but then also writing answers to those two questions there. That's it, guys. Thank you very much.